Welcome back to our series on introduction to the financial services industry. This presentation, we're going to talk about electronic communication networks, also known as ECNs. And again, the same disclaimer I've gone through before. This is a these videos are for beginners. Um, it's all publicly available information, and there's nothing going to be given here that's intended as advice or recommendations. So let's talk about ECNs. Technology kind of leads the way in the financial services industry. I mean, 150 years ago, it was using technology like the ticker tape or the, tele, the, the telegraph and then the telephone and then computers and then the more advanced technology. ECNs developed with the idea that there was the electronic network, a peer-to-peer -peer network for trading to disintermediate the market. Now, ECNs are... Uh, electronic systems that match buy and sell orders for securities. And ECN connects major brokerage and individual traders so that they can trade directly between themselves without going through a middleman. That's what an electronic network is. And it's interesting because it lets individual traders connect with brokerage firms. ECNs make money by charging fees for each transaction. Um, the Security and Exchange Commission requires the ECNs be registered as broker dealers. Uh, ECNs display, electronically display the best, uh, uh, the best available bid and ask quotes for multiple market participants. So everybody gets to see, everybody joins the network and everybody sees what the quotes are that are available and also how many shares are being offered. And then automatically the ECN lets, lets the participants um, uh, match and execute orders. Now, just a, a couple examples of ECNs, and you're probably already familiar with, but for instance, Instanet. Instanet is one of the first ECNs, and it came out in 1969. Um, Instanet is, you know, was many years was widely used by market makers for NASDAQs, um, for NASDAQ, right? Um, SelectNet is another ECN. Um, New York Stock Exchange, Archipelago, Arca, which I have happened to have been involved with at the time it came out. Um, it's called ARCA, but it was came out of Archipelago. And that's a uh, New York Stock Exchange ECN. Um, and it, facil it facilitates electronic stock trades uh, on major US exchanges, including that New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ. Bloomberg, Bloomberg actually has a product called Tradebook that operates as an ECN. Uh, and that was founded in 1996 also for U.S. equity trades. Island is, a, is another example of a ECN. Uh, I think Ready is probably still around. There used to be a lot of these things, Brute, Ready. They were all ECNs operating. So he, this picture kind of gives you the idea of what these electronic networks are. So the electronic network, the ECN network, actually gets registered as a broker dealer and provides a, 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 a place, an electronic form for liquidity. Now on the right hand, I put I pulled this definition. I, I, I took this straight off Investopedia. So I'm not plagiarizing, I'm giving them credit that this was their quote. ECN brokers are non-dealing desk brokers, meaning that they do not pass on order flow to market makers. Instead, they match participants in a trade electronically and pass the orders to liquidity providers. An ECN facilitates trades for interested investors across the ECN. So think of it like this. You have an electronic network. You have a screen and everybody connects. Buyer 123 connect and seller 123 connect. And buyer one has 20 shares for, uh, uh, for sale and buyer two has 10 shares for sale. I'm uh, sorry, buyer one wants to buy 20 shares, buyer two wants to buy 10 shares, buyer three wants to buy 15 shares. Seller one wants to, wants to sell 20 shares, seller two wants to sell 15 shares, and seller three wants to sell 10 shares. Through the ECN, and you'll see it also has institutional traders sitting in the middle here, through the ECN, all of these participants in the ECN 
can see how many shares and at what price are being offered, both for, for sale and for purchase. And when there's a match, they can match them up and get an execution. ECNs do not handle any settlement or clearing. So if you do something on ECN, that still has to go to a settling clearing broker to handle the whole settlement process. ECNs are widely used in the foreign exchange business in Europe. I'm not familiar with those ECNs directly. I haven't worked with them directly, but I know that there are ECNs out there for foreign exchange, uh, which is a completely different business, not to be confused with stock trading. ECN members are expected to bring liquidity. So if you're a member of one of these ECNs, they expect that not only are you going to buy securities, not only are you going to be a buyer, but that you're going to be a seller, that you're going to sell a certain number of shares. If, if all you do is buy from it, if all you do is pull liquidity, uh, you're not going to be very popular with the ECN. There are a bunch of ECNs out there. Uh, it's a lot easier to start than, than you think. Um, they can be closed. They can be private. Um, they have a different regulatory oversight as long as you're registered as a broker. Now, there are some ECNs, I think BATS in the Midwest, I, I think BATS, B-A-T-S, I think that started as an ECN and then later got registered as an exchange, which requires a different level of approval. But it was operating, it wasn't being an, an ECN, which is registered as a broker, providing the, these connectivity to becoming an electronic exchange. Um, I believe, and BATS is now an electronic exchange. So that's the idea of an ECN. The ECN is an electronic communication network that brings buyers and sellers together. Um, I think that's a pretty simple explanation. If you have any questions, please contact me. My email is listed below. And uh, thank you for joining. Have a nice day.